Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my review of Solus OS version 3. Solus is a bit different to most of the distributions I review which are generally based on Debian or Ubuntu. No, Solus is not based on anything at all, it's its own distribution. And what sort of package manager does it use? Uh, something completely different called EOPKG. Or I think they were supposed to be moving to something called Sol, but anyway. EOPKG is the package installer. But before I get too far, let's take a look at some memory usage and the kernel that we have. Uname-A, we have the latest stable kernel of Linux 4.12.7. They have switched from using the long-term support kernel to now just using the stable kernel. Although you can still get the long-term support kernel, and if you're upgrading from an older version of Solus, which you can because it's a rolling release distro, it doesn't really matter, no, you'll still get the long-term support kernel. And in terms of memory usage, around 700 meg of RAM. This version of Solus is still based on GTK. There's a couple of different flavours of Solus using the GNOME and Marty desktop, but the version I've gone for here is the Budgie desktop. This is the desktop that really is made for the operating system. It is based on GNOME at the moment, but at some point we will expect it to be based on Qt. That is going to be the version 11 of Budgie desktop, which we based on Qt. The version we have here is version 10.4, and I believe this is nicknamed Irish Summer. Hmm. Irish summer. Is that meant to be raining all the time? Oh no, that's a Welsh summer. So you can see a lot of similarities to GNOME here. Although I have to say, this styling is very pretty. Anyway, what makes it so special? Why wouldn't you just have GNOME? Well, it does seem to be a bit more of a traditional layout for GNOME. But you've also got this Raven menu on the right hand side. Now this does have reduced functionality compared to previous versions of Solus, in that it used to have the control panel type options here. And they've been moved to a separate application now. So all we have are some information about the applets, so we've got calendar, sound selector, and notifications, as well as the option to enter the control panel, or budgie settings as it's called, as well as the option to lock screen and log out. The application launcher has a searcher in it. Um, it's Pretty good actually, it is a little bit improved from before. So if I was to type night light, or I'm looking more for the night light, yeah, so it's gone for displays. So that is something that's nothing to do with the name. It has picked up on the subject that is here. So in displays we have the night light, and that's another new feature. After that, you've got the option of selecting applications from menus. So this looks pretty similar to many of the other application launchers that we have in Linux desktops. And we have a few shortcuts for opening applications, as well as the currently open applications here in the dock. So if I right click on them, I have the option of pinning to the panel. Panel or dock? Hmm, I thought they were calling this a dock. No, they do actually call it panel, my mistake. So looking at budgie settings, so we start with styling. So these are the sort of options we'd expect, be able to choose different themes. Looks like there's quite a few pre-installed on the system. Using the papyrus icons, yeah, they look pretty good. And the cursors, they've actually defaulted to using the breeze cursor from KDE. So we could have a dark theme. So currently it's the light theme with some dark menus on it. Mainly the GNOME menus that are in the application title bar are the dark menus. Desktop, changing the icons we have on the desktop. Fonts, yeah. Fairly self-explanatory. Windows, button layout. You can easily choose between the right and left hand side. Very simple. Disable unredirection of windows. This option is for advanced users. Use this if you're having graphical or performance issues with dedicated GPUs. Now I noticed I was having a little bit of issues, so maybe that might solve it for me. I did notice some screen tearing on a rapid motion video. Anyway, the panels, the bottom panel. So that's the current layout of it. We can add new applets to the panels, although there's not really a huge choice, to be honest. Um, it's fairly simple. But the settings, do I like it at the bottom? No, not really. I would like it on the left-hand side. Would I like to change the size? Yes, I would. Nice and simple. Automatically hide. Huh. 
Well, we're way more advanced than Unity ever was. Transparency. Oh, very nice, very nice. Wait, what's dynamic mean? Not really much difference there. Anyway, let's go for none. Ah, oh, here's dock mode. That's why I started calling it a dock. And you can add additional panels to the screen and easily remove them. And the last option here is Auto Start. By moving away from the Raven-based menu, they've been able to add more components and reduce the dependency on using other tools like the GNOME Tweak tool. Looking a bit more under the hood, we have the option of installing Snaps, but not many available. Anyway, along with Snaps, we also have App Armor installed by default. And another change under the hood is an improvement on the version of Meta, which is now up to version 17.1.6. Let's open up some applications. So the default video player is GNOME MPV, although I have installed VLC onto the system. Rhythmbox has the alternative layout with the play and track position at the bottom of the screen. Why does it, why does it keep losing my library though? I don't understand this one. So add music and yeah, everything appears back here. Now I did have a crash when I first run Rhythmbox, so I don't know whether that's affected any settings. So maybe it has, maybe the settings for Rhythmbox are now corrupted. That's not necessarily something I blame on a distribution. The default browser is Firefox. And we have a software center. Let's take a look at the performance on opening at LibreOffice. So writer, yeah, selected with a keyboard. So first time run is generally a bit slower. So let's go for a second time run. I've forgotten which side the close, minimize, maximize buttons are. I've been just switched them over. Anyway, let's try again. So. Let's go for a different search, LibreOffice. Yeah, it still picked up right of those, so yeah, go for it. Second time run, you know, only marginally quicker. Nice theming to LibreOffice, does look good. I really do like the color they've gone for that. Um, what is it, it's sort of a greeny blue color. Reminds me of the color I've painted on the walls in my bedroom, and maybe that's why I like it. With all these applications we have open, we can take a look at the Alt-Tab application switcher. So there it is. Um, hmm. I think those icons are a little bit small, but otherwise I do like the idea of what they've gone for, the iconified layout with the text of what the application is just below it. So a nice idea. It's just in my opinion that could be a little bit bigger on the icons. But that's not necessarily a criticism, that's just me saying I would like it slightly different. Anyway, within the software center, I'm just clicking around a bit. So there's not necessarily the massive choice of applications which you might expect from other Linux distributions, say Fedora or Debian. I'm going to go back to Terminal and interesting thing I've noticed. So if I install an application, so sudo eopkg, let's see if GIMP is in there. GIMP. So yes, there are extra packages due to dependencies. Yes, that is fine. So I'm going to open up the application menu. Now with the application menu still open, GIMP, <laughs> it's already there. I noticed it flicker, so perhaps it redid the, oh, what do you call it, like the, the database of applications. So yeah, perhaps that refreshed while GIMP installed. But the fact you're able to open it from the menu immediately, well, that's a massive plus there. So yeah, first time run of it is a little bit slower than we'd expect the second time run to be much improved. Although GIMP, yeah, it still has quite a bit to open. <laughs> no, that was a lot quicker the second time around. Oh, brilliant. A very new version of GIMP as well. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with the budgie desktop. I'm actually really interested to see what it'll look like when it's under Qt. So a Qt based version of budgie. Because what I have to say, in running a cute application here, KDN Live, uh, not rendered particularly well. It's a bit mixture on the colours there. But to be fair, GNOME itself has similar problems. And actually, why can't I resize any of these uh, sections? I might be... Ah, there it is. I just couldn't see where I was trying to click. There we are. So yes, I can resize it. So the functionality of KDN Live does seem to be there. It's just the look is pretty appalling. Well, that's a pretty up-to-date version of Cadian Live. In conclusion, I'm certainly impressed with the progress on Solus and the Budgie desktop. 
The theming is really pretty. And the functionality of the desktop is very good. I think you could put a new user in front of this distribution and they would be able to get on and work perfectly normally. Might find it a bit limiting on the choice of applications, but then again, if they're a new user, they wouldn't necessarily be aware of all the choice that is available in Linux. But in terms of actually using the desktop, yeah, I think they'd be able to get on with it perfectly fine. The speed and responsiveness of the system is very good. One thing that did confuse me slightly was when I did a large file copy in Nautilus, I didn't actually notice where the progress was. It actually does show in Nautilus, it's a very small pie chart on top right hand side. That could be a feature of how it is in GNOME, I honestly can't remember now, so yeah, maybe it's just me not used to how the new version of Nautilus is nowadays. So that was a look at Solus OS version 3, thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.